<laughs> I mean, ice cream, I can take them all. So I was like, I want them all. And, and, and the owner said no, because she really wanted me to savor every single you know, flavor, because she made them with so much care and, and mastery and all of that. So she said, no, the most you can do for corn is two. So I said, okay, two then. The first one was mascarpone and white chocolate. So you could imagine the taste of it, right? It was, like we say it in French, we, we tasted the sky. It was so beautiful. All your, your, your butts, your inside are, are you know, excited. And, all, wow. and then I turned around and there were two Italian men uh, who looked like bankers or lawyers, you know, in perfect soup and beautiful tie, eating a cone. When do you see that? You know, making suits, <laughs> making a comb. So I said, oh no, this is Fantasy Island. <laughs> what is this? So I turn around and then, and, and Marco, well, you, you see that I'm in trouble, right? I'm, I'm too much beauty around. And then Marco bent down and, and not bent down, he just started talking, you know, small talk. So I said, what kind of music do you like? And I said, uh, I'm a music idiot, so I like Leonard Cohen for words, for the words. And I said, you know, he has written a song called Suzanne. And I don't know why in my head I thought he didn't know about Suzanne. So I said, in that song, he said, you know, you touch him, uh, you, you, uh, she touches you with her mind, or you touch her with her, your mind, or so. I said, this image is so beautiful that the mind becomes so tangible and all of that. And all in the middle of my explanation, he bent down <laughs> and he sang to me, Suzanne. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. You see my problem, yeah? <laughs> I have like the best ice cream with a man singing to me, Suzanne, in English, with a light Italian accent. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a killer. Right? <laughs> so I turned around and I said, Okay, Marco, rule number one. On this tour, no more singing. <laughs> I said, you know, I have two sons in Montreal. I need to use my air ticket to go back to them. So you stop singing, please. I cannot stay in Italy. And, um, and so, so that was. And then I turned myself into a Vietnamese mother. You know, like so. I asked him a very castrating question: What did you study in university? <laughs> right? And that all Vietnamese mothers would do that. So I said. Yeah, be a Vietnamese mother. Uh, and um, so, so he said he studied Russian literature. <laughs> and I said, why? Of course, you know, an Italian studying Russian literature? He said, well, because he used to be a champion at, at chess at the national level when he was a teenager. So could you believe this? This man can play chess, <laughs> and he is a graduate of Russian literature, and he can sing. Right? And so I said, okay, so I don't know anything about Russian literature, so you have to explain to me what is Russian literature between now and the end of the trip, the, the end of the tour. I said, perfect. So we took the train and we went to Milano. We arrived in Milano and the talk was at the university. And as you could imagine, the university was, I don't know how many centuries uh, old. It was just beautiful. As, as soon as you walk in, you feel more intelligent, you know, with all the spirits of mathematicians and philosophers and all of that going into your body, right? And so after the talk, we still had 20 minutes uh, before the train. So I said, let's, let's have another tour. I want to absorb as much as I can from this place. And uh, I said, sure, you know. So we walked around and we passed in front of, uh, of the chapel of the university. And I don't have a religion at all. My parents didn't give me one and I haven't looked for one, so I, I'm still clueless. Uh, and, and, but I love the sounds you know, the, in chapels and churches and temples and all that. So I said, Marco, we're going into the chapel. So we went in there and there was no one. So the sound was just pristine, you know, perfect. And, 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 and from the corner of my eye, I saw that there was a confessional 
And I always dream of going into a confessional because, you know, in movies, the best stories are always told through that little window. Right? So I said, Marco, we're going into the confessional. I'm sorry, I, I was in the confession. She's a Catholic, then, and I, I know I'm offending her, but so just put your hands on your, your ears. And, and so I said, and he said he could not do it because he, he's a Catholic. He said, that's a sacrilege. How do you say that? Yeah? Uh, blasphemous to, to sit in the, 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 the priest's place. And I said, but I'm not a Catholic. So I can sit in the priest's place. You go on the other side. <laughs> so now she's like, oh my God, you will burn in hell. And, uh, but that's okay. All my friends are in hell. You know, they will go to hell. So uh, I'm going with them. And, uh, and so I went in. And then so Marco went to the other side. And he went into that little window. And he said that he was um, uh, in Torino going to a press conference. And on the way he lost a button of his shirt. And he didn't have enough time to go back to the hotel to change. And so he saw a seamstress, you know, a hole in the wall. It was tiny. She, she was just in there with a machine. And so she, she, he walked in and she, he asked if she could help him. And so she lifted her head from behind the machine, uh, the sewing machine, and she was sublime. So he said that his heart skipped a beat, you know, just seeing her. And then so she stood up and walked towards him. And, uh, and he said that she was older. And I said, what do you mean by older? <laughs> and he said, late 40s. And I said, that's my age. <laughs> right? And I said, that's a perfect age. And uh, he said, yes, she was like a ripe fruit walking towards me and uh, and she said that he didn't have to take his shirt off she bent down and and sewed the the, the button on him and in order to do so she she held the, the shirt a little bit away from his skin and he said it was worse because then the fabric would touch him but very lightly and you never know when it would touch you and he said that his heart was pounding harder and harder and he could hear his heart pounding and her head was next to his heart so she could hear it more than he could and he was about to implode and he said you know, I'm a boy, I cannot hide everything, and she was next to it, and, and he said, I didn't know what to do. And then he said it was a very warm day, and so she wore a, a cotton dress, but it was so used that she, he, she, he could see all the, the fibers of, of, uh, of, the, of the fabric, and the little prints of, uh, of flowers were just hanging all on, on those threads. And he said that uh, be because it was warm, she had her hair up in a bun. And he said, all of a sudden, he looked down and he saw a drop of sweat running down on the side of her neck. And he said, that drop of sweat grew the line of adultery. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why the book Crime and Punishment has been written. And this is all you need to know about Russian literature. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, I had to ask him, and what happened next, right? I wanted the next chapter. And uh, he said that he ran away. <laughs> and I said, what? You stole the needle? You didn't pay the woman? And you pass on? A marvelous moment. What is, what's wrong with you? And he said, no, he did go back at night to put the money in the crack of the door, but he never went back. And I said, why is that? And he said, because if you want to immortalize something as ephemeral as that tension, you have to let it go. And so I, I think this illustrates perfectly why you need to read, because if this boy had never read before, he would never be able to give uh, an interpretation as sublime as, as, as the, the line of adult, adultery to something as banal as a drop of sweat, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to read. And, 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 uh, and, well, I think writers are there just to, I don't know, make you dream probably, and to give a different interpretation to 
the banality of daily life and uh, and and well in my case I write just because I love words I can play with words for so long and just to see uh, the different the differences between uh, the, the the languages because I kind of speak English uh, I know French a little bit better I know Vietnamese a little bit less uh, but enough to compare and and when when I yeah, and I can spend the whole day basically just comparing words, you know, for example, and we talked earlier today, uh, there are many words that you don't have a translation, but every language has a special way to look at the world and to interpret the reality. Um, and I'll give you one example, home sweet home, mm -hmm. something so banal, right, in English, you don't have a translation for that in French. There's no home sweet home. And you don't have the verb, uh, the translation for the verb to long for. It doesn't exist in French, and uh, it stirs my soul. You see, the, the, it doesn't exist in French. You cannot translate that. But on the other hand, in French, there's a word called uh, uh, which is gourmandise, mm -hmm. and it's about I don't know how you say that in English because you don't have that in English like gourmandise. And same thing with pudeur. Mm -hmm. And gourmandise is about loving to eat, but in a very gentle and tender way, right? The gourmandise is the little things that, the, the, the uh, like candy is like bonbon, but yeah, so, but it's not translatable. It's, there's no trans equivalent. And, and, uh, and so gourmandise, pudeur, pudeur is kind of shyness, but not, not really shyness. How would you translate pudeur into? Modesty. Yeah, but not really, right? Pudeur is almost like shyness, but intentionally, right? And, uh, and, and then there's one word which is really important that, that you should all have in English, uh, is jouissance in, in, in French, and you don't have it in English. And jouissance is not pleasure, it's more than pleasure, but it's not orgasm, you know? <laughs> orgasm is striking short and intense, whereas jouissance is long, Longer. ample, yeah. and serene, and full. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And why do you need to have it? Because if you don't have the word, how can you have that sensation? And I'm sure that you English speakers, you must have the same sensation, sure. right? I hope that you, <laughs> that you have it, right? Because it's worth it. Look for it, yeah. And 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 I think that we need to have it. And 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 when I compare it with Vietnamese, uh, just the verb to love, you know, in Vietnamese it's so precise, and we have so many words for 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 the verb to love. We don't use the same word for parents when we say that we love. Our parents, it's more gratitude, right? The verb that we have to use is gratitude. And in a couple, is more uh, enduring love, right? It's not just love. You have to endure the other person. <laughs> and, and it is so true because yeah, if you say, oh, I will love you forever as my wife or husband or whatever, it's such a, a false advertising. How would I say that? Uh, yes, because it's, it's an illusion that you can only love for a marriage to last, right? You have to work and you have to endure. And, uh, and so Vietnamese is so right on this, that it's enduring love, you know? And, uh, and, and the verb that is so beautiful that the Vietnamese language has, it, which is you, and you, is, there's no ambiguity when you use this word to express love to somebody. It's really that passionate love, you know, that, and, and I don't know why in French and in English we don't have a special word for this sensation, which is this feeling, which is so unique and rare. So I invite you to please think of a verb, uh, because I'm, <laughs> I'm the speaker for uh, the, the, the spoke person, spoke person, yeah, for a dictionary, for the the French dictionary, Le, Le Petit Robert, mm -hmm. and they asked me because I I know so 
so few words that they said, oh, she would love the dictionary, you know, she, and I, do, I, I do read the dictionary, so they said, you should be a spokesperson, because, uh, yeah, I use it the most, and, uh, and, and so I get to work with the lex lexicographer, that's how you say it, yeah, the one who writes the dictionary, I didn't know, but that, you know, I thought that it's an old man with spider web all around <laughs> uh, writing the dictionary. But uh, I, the, the Le Petit Robert, if you know of this dictionary, the, lexico the lexicographer is super handsome and young. So I find all kinds of excuse, excuses to work with him. And I said, yeah, you have to find a word for to love passionately the equivalent of the word in Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And um, so how, how long, I can talk for days, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm worse than Fidel Castro. I can go on and on and on. So if you have any questions, you can you can really cut me off and, and, and make me talk about something more serious uh, or not. Um, and uh, or if, uh, yeah, and if you have enough, you, you can also leave. I won't take it personally. I'm from a family which they talk all the time and nobody listens. Uh, my husband is is, is uh, one child from, is the only child in his family and he's from Quebec so people are very polite. Uh, when you move your lips then everybody would shut up and listen right In my family nobody listened. They all talk. And so in at Christmas time, we we're about 30, 40 people around the table. And my husband, the first time he came, he, uh, he said that it sounded like having 40 radio stations on <laughs> at the same time. And nobody listened, but he was the only one who listened. So we all looked at him, right? Uh, and now he just hid himself and or doesn't come anymore. And, <laughs> and and to have some peace. But um, uh, so yeah, do do you have any questions? Otherwise, I can talk to you about I Macedonia. I have to go. Yes, thank you. There's no translation for jouissance, right? Uh, pardon? On fait de son mieux. Parfait. Merci. She's a professor of literature, and if she doesn't have a translation, then there's none. <laughs> yes, please. Um, thank you so much for uh, for sharing. Um, so, quick question on the language. I don't speak French. I wish I did. Um, my husband does some. And actually, the frustrating thing is it's not that easy to get the French version here. You know, you have oh, to really? you know, ship it from Canada. But especially book like like this, where it's so image driven and moment driven, and so if each chapter is almost a vignette, to me it would lend itself very well to sort of side by side, you know, French and English, yeah. French English and Vietnamese. Is that something? Uh, that it's not available in Vietnamese. Yeah. Uh, it's What's available side in side Chinese. Side? <laughs> what I'm thinking is side by side, you know, where you you would have the same page in English here and French. Absolutely, here. you can you can absolutely read it that way. And the translation is very, very it's excellent actually. Uh, the publisher has given me. I didn't know that she existed. I didn't know anything, and it was the first book, so I never expected for them to choose basically the best translator available in Canada. She has won so many Governor General's awards for translation. I think she's there every year. She's not even surprised anymore going to the Governor General's <laughs> residence. Uh, she has her kit always ready. Uh, and, uh, and so she, she has done a marvelous job. Of course, if you can read in French, I would prefer you to read in French because that was the language that I, 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 I used uh, and that's a language that, you know, that was in my head. Uh, but when I read the, the last version of the translation in English, I um, I forgot if I was reading it in French or in English. So I think it was very, very good. And uh, for the other languages, I have no idea. You know, the Swedish, it's very cute with all the little dots and the bar and all that. But that's about all I know. Uh, the only thing I recognized was my name. And uh, in some countries, you don't even recognize the name, uh, like in Bulgarian. They, they have a different uh, alphabet, yeah. so it's just, yeah, something. 
and then they say, this is your book, but it could be any book. And, uh, and I just go like, thank you. And, and same thing with Ukrainian. You know, I just come back from Kiev, and so they handed me the book, and I had no idea. The only thing I recognized was the conical hat. Okay. <laughs> because for, for the cover. So they said, oh, I said, oh, maybe this is the, my book. My book. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, in German, they didn't use, the, they changed the title. Most of the translations use the same title, except for Italy and Germany, because they said that in, the, in their language, it doesn't work. You know, Ru doesn't work. So they changed it into something really long. Uh, so I got to the border, and then the uh, the, cust the the immigration man, he asked me, uh, so why are you going to Germany? And I said, uh, well, for the launch of my book. And he said, oh, so what is your book? I said, I don't know what is the name of my book. And I didn't have a copy. I didn't have, oh, you know, I didn't learn how to... And then I said, uh, well, it, start with, uh, it starts with uh, D-I-E, right? D -der -der no, D-E-R. I know that it starts with D-E-R. And der is like D or A or A. <laughs> so I said, uh, no. So basically, I was sent to a room for interview. Uh, you know, private interview, like, hey, what, hey, why are you here? And so, yeah, I couldn't, and we had to Google my name. I said, you can Google my name, and it's true that I do write books, and so on and so forth. And, and uh, so, uh, for the French, I'll, 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 I'll try to think of a link that you can go to and order directly from Quebec. Um, I, I, I know, I, I can do it. What I was envisioning is actually one book where you would have side by side. Uh, the English French and, and the French English? Oh, book. that's a very yeah. great idea. For the, because they're planning on next year for the 10th anniversary of this book. I don't know why mm -hmm. there should be an anniversary for the book. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but what, what I'm planning though is um, uh, it's a, a basically a big party where I would invite the people that I've met because of this book. The different authors, the different uh, poets and all of that, you're, you're cutting me off, right? Uh, so I'll share with you one last thing that, that I've learned uh, that I, I got to uh, know about because of this book. I was invited to uh, uh, to Edinburgh in Scotland uh, for the World Writers uh, Conference. Um, uh, that, that conference uh, was created 50 years ago the first time uh, with Henry Miller, with uh, so 25 authors uh, from 15 different countries sitting down two hours a day for five days discussing different questions and the first one was, uh, for example, uh, uh, is there a national literature? We wonder, right? So if you, uh, you talk about an immigrant experience in Canada, is it still a Canadian book? Is it still a Canadian subject or matter, right? And I think it is uh, because Canada is this welcoming uh, uh, country, and um, uh, and and then uh, yeah, so censorship and literature and all of that. So I was invited 50 years later when they did the anniversary as one of the 50 uh, authors. I don't know why they invited me. Uh, because all the other ones were P Pulitzer Prize, Booker Prize, they had written 20 books, and, and, and I had, by that time, I had written only one small book, and, uh, and so I think it's the same answer than when I went with the Governor General. I think they invited me because I was a woman from Quebec and Vietnam and short and you know and all of that together. So I said, okay, if we invite her, we cover you know uh, quite a few boxes. And um, and uh, and while I was there, I met a, a young man who volunteered for the the, the conference, and he was maybe 25. Uh, studying literature, so I said to him, I said, if I, I leave Edinburgh uh, and I want to leave with one author, who should I read? And he took me to, uh, instead of just telling me the name, he took me to a bookstore, took out that, that poetry book and read me a poem. And this poem is so beautiful that I will still another two minutes to read it to you so that you can go home and have these images with you instead of my 
underwear in a plant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should not say that. You must have already forgotten about it. And, uh, uh, so it goes this way. His name is Edwin Morgan, and he passed away in the late 90s, so he's very contemporary. And uh, his writing is crystal clear, it's so beautiful, and the, the one that I learned by heart is called When You Go. And, uh, but I suggest that you also look for the poem name One Cigarette. Even if you don't smoke, you will fall in love with those tobacco lips. Okay? <laughs> so look for this One Cigarette, Edwin Morgan. So uh, the one I'm reading to you now is uh, When You Go. So it goes this way. When you go, and if you go, and I should want to die, there's nothing I'd be saved by more than the time you fell asleep in my arms in a trust so gentle I let the darkening room drink up the evening to rest or the new rain lightly roused you awake I asked did you hear the rain in your dreams and half dreaming still you only said I love you That's it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, I would like to really thank the embassy for organizing my trip here. And especially tonight, I would like to invite my aunt, who has cooked, I don't know how many hours, for the event. And she's a great chef, so I'm very spoiled to have my aunt. Please come, 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 come. So she, 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 she doesn't look like she worked very hard, but I think it took a long, long time to, to prepare all the food for you. So I'm very proud to, have, to, to be able to offer you food from, uh, from my family, basically. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I would like to have one thing that the gift from, um, she the, she's our master in Haymarket. And the, the one that she bring to Kim Thuy, because Kim Thuy is, is a lotus, yes, in Canada, remember? No. Yes. No. This is the real lotus, the I real one. goes with the dress. Yeah, the real one. <laughs> and she also have like a something for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you know what? Thank you for the library. I, the bookstore, I hope that From you room. will live on yeah. Yeah. forever and ever. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.